how I started a business, all of the steps I took to launch. Here is exactly how I started a business. I am going to go in depth into all of the tasks that I completed and how long it took me to launch my first product. And I've previously shared stories on how I started my very first business, but I haven't shared any stories on how I started my current business, my personal brand, kathkyle.com. So today I'm going to walk you through all of the tasks that I completed to get to the stage where I was ready to launch my first product. Today you will understand the tasks involved in starting an online business and you will get an idea of how long it takes to create a new business online. My name is Kath Kyle and I'm the author of Stamp Goals book and I'm so happy that you're here. I help content creators and change makers manifest business success through spirituality, self-belief and strategy. And I help you master your marketing, manifestation and money mindset. So let me ask you what you're struggling with. Have you ever wanted to start a business or maybe you've started a business, but you haven't got to the stage where you're re ready to launch a product yet? or perhaps you've launched a product and it didn't sell as well as you thought it would, so now you're feeling a bit stuck. So let me know what you're struggling with by leaving a comment on my blog, on my YouTube channel, or send me a DM on Instagram at Kath underscore Kyle. So how long did it take to launch my first product? I started my personal brand in October 2019 and I launched my first product in July 2020. So yes, that is a long time between starting and launching a product, nine months. But I have to point out that I didn't actually work for four, at least four of these months at all on my business. And some of the months it was only working a little bit because I spent two months solely focusing on moving to a new country and doing house viewings and then another three months homeschooling my kids in lockdown. So it really only took me about five months to get to the point where I was ready to launch. So I think that's a pretty good going for a new business. And I did waste a lot of time because I changed my mind about my niche several times and I was working on two products that I didn't even launch straight away. So another thing to bear in mind is that I also have other businesses to run and I only work part-time hours normally. So if I had been working full-time, I probably could have launched my first product within one to two months. And when I first started working on my new business, I was still doing work on my existing business and I am not really doing work on them now. So now I'm going to break down the tasks that I completed each month in my business that I wanted to get done before I launched my first product. And another thing to bear in mind is that I ended up doing a lot of these tasks, repeating them over and over again about two to three times because I changed my mind about my niche about three or four times during this period while I worked out what I was really passionate about, which is quite normal when you start a new business because you're not always sure exactly what resonates with you straight away. And I do always encourage people just to get started and see what really excites them when they're creating content and what they really enjoy doing. So I started off focusing on working less and earning more. And then I graduated on to productivity, which I love this topic as well because I feel like I'm super productive and then I moved on to goal setting for business because I developed a, a real passion for goal setting and then finally I set, settled on manifestation for business which I feel actually incorporates all of the previous subjects under one subject anyway so I'm really happy that I chose manifestation for business as my main niche because to be able to manifest business success you have to be focused on manifesting more while not burning yourself out you have to be 
productive and focused on your work you have to be driven by achieving something more and it makes sense to write down what you want to manifest in terms of writing down your goals so I feel like manifestation ties all of these subjects together very nicely manifesting in business is about mindset but it's also about doing what is needed so it really incorporates all aspects of building a business which is what I love so let's move on to the tasks that I completed and I'm going to break these down every month. I'm going to share what tasks I completed every single month in my business. So here's the tasks that I completed in October. I went through the 30 steps to planning my dream business, which included planning my signature course called Dream Business Blueprint. So I planned my course about planning my business while planning my business so yes it is it might get a bit confusing but that's what happens when you help business owners is you end up um, sharing a lot of work while doing the exact same work that you're teaching other people to do which I think is really exciting then I created a course slide template using Google Slides I then wrote my lesson headings and descriptions for my course I outlined my offer framework. I set up my homepage on my website. I wrote my bio and my strap line. I then set up G Suite for branding for my new email address, which is at kathkyle.com. So I've got support at kathkyle.com and I did that using G Suite. And this actually took a really long time because I switched my email address from my old email address to my new one and I had so many different places that I had to change my email address so um that yeah that took a really long time and I created um also in that month I created social media templates which I have again changed several times I created an editorial calendar which again I seem to recreate this almost every single month at the moment. I created a blog post call to action template. So I put all my call to actions in one document so I can just pull from that template. In fact, some of these things I forget I've done them and I think I need to go and add my latest call to actions to the template so I can keep reusing them. So this is actually really good to help me remember what valuable things I've actually created in my own business. I also created a related links document for blog posts and this means that what I do at the end of all of my blog posts is I say something like um, and you may also love the following related resources and then I list out about five different blog posts that are related to that blog post so that I create internal links from all of my blog posts to other blog posts, which really helps Google to index your content. And it helps to tell Google that this is important content because you keep linking to it from other places. So I make sure that all of my blog posts have at least five or four different links pointing to them from other blog posts. Then I created a content creation template document, which this is a master template that I use when I'm creating content. I have boxes for all of the different social media, for the blog posts, for the email, the ti different titles, the different descriptions. I've got everything in that one document so that it keeps me organized and I know exactly what's going to be shared for that content piece. And it really is good for repurposing content as well because you can just copy and paste the text from one place to another without having to type out the same thing over and over again. So that has been pretty transformational in my business to have these content creation templates. I also planned my YouTube channel branding. I also created a bank of story ideas, ideas related to concepts within my business that I could tell. I published a contact me page. I wrote and published my about me page. I did an, an experiment with Tailwind Tribes, which was actually really in depth. It took a really long time. It basically involved me 
upgrade into the highest package within Tailwind Tribes. And if you don't know what Tailwind Tribes are, they're basically where you agree to share so many people's pins on Pinterest via Tailwind, which is a scheduling tool. And then in return, you are allowed to drop so many of your pins onto the Tailwind's tribe different areas. And then people can choose whether or not to reshare your content and there's no guarantees. And I've tried this with the last three of my businesses after watching other people have massive success and I've put my all into it every time and the results I've got are pretty much nothing. So to me, this didn't make any difference whatsoever. So this was an experiment that I tried and this is just a good example of how strategies can work for other people and they don't necessarily work for you. So I'm glad I tried it. I tend to put my all into experiments. I often do experiments like this and on this particular occasion, it didn't, um, it didn't really yield any results whatsoever. So I stopped doing that and I downgraded to the most basic package on Tailwind where I just share my own content now basically. Then after that I came up with some content crates which are um, my name for content categories for blog posts and that wraps up October. So let's move on now to the tasks that I completed in November. In November, I started my Instagram channel for Kath Kyle for my brand. I created a resources page for my website. I signed up for a group of affiliate accounts for all of the online tools that I use so that when I mention them, I can give people a referral link that can also get them a discount. So if you go to the notes surrounding this content, you will see some of the tools that I use, I will actually leave them there. So that is the reason why I did that. So that when I mention them in the future, I've always got my own affiliate link to use. I also created a new file storage organizational system for Google Docs because in my last business, I, although I was organized, I put all my content into a spreadsheet. I kind of just dumped all my Google Docs into one folder and I don't like to have mess like that. Um, I like to always keep everything organized so that I've got at least two places that I can find it in case I lose something. So I created um, file structures and I'm happily using that system now and it's working really, really well. I do love to be organized it is one of my keys to my productivity. After that, I added pixels to my website. So I went and created some pixels for Facebook advertising, for for AdSense, for YouTube advertising. I can't remember what else I did. I think I put Pinterest pixels on there. There was probably something else, but basically I went through all the pixels that I could think of and added them to my website because I knew that in the future I would need them and it's better to add the pixels sooner rather than later because if you want to track people who have come to your website, then you can go back a lot further. Whereas if you just added pixels today, you wouldn't have any data at all. So I knew that was important. So I did that. I also added legal pages to my website, which is a um, legal requirement for being in business. I also created a spreadsheet template for storing all of my business information. And this is absolutely huge. It has got so many sheets in it and I put everything that I could possibly want to store related to my business in the spreadsheet and I use it all the time. And I just cannot understand how people can function in a business if they don't store their information in a logical place. Like I just wouldn't be able to find anything if I didn't organize it properly. So that has been and apps that one of the best things I have done for my business. So everything is in there, links to all my content, all my documents, everything you could possibly want is in that spreadsheet. I also set up brand new systems for my business. So where I'm putting things, when I'm doing things, when I'm creating things, schedules and that kind of thing. I also set up my new email list with Active Campaign, which is the company that I love because you get, um, it's actually very easy for beginners to use and it has also got all the advanced functionality that you would want 
when you get a little more advanced as well and it's at the fraction of the price of some other companies like for example um, ConvertKit which everybody raves about you can do everything that you can do in ConvertKit with Active Campaign, and it literally is a fraction of the price if you go for the light option and if you've got an on online business then you only really need the light option you don't need to pay for any of the other functionality because you get all of the advanced features you need and I also created a welcome email autoresponder with just one email in it to welcome people to my email list. I then created a document full of my own concepts and ideas and as I was planning this content piece I totally forgot that I did this and I really love what I wrote in here <laughs> and I was reading back and I was thinking why have I never used these? So here are some examples of my own idioms and these are quotes that I invented and I'm definitely going to use them much more in the future. Here are things like don't put the launch before the plan. One email subscriber is worth 10 social media followers. Better on time than perfect. Don't kill the creator who creates the killer content. Don't put all your eggs in someone else's basket. Make your own basket. Scale up while the going is good. They give you an inch and you go the extra mile. Good things come to those who believe. So it's like putting a twist on regular sayings and putting my own spin and my own belief on them. So yes, I've got loads of these and I'm going to start using them a lot more. So that's all the tasks that I completed in November. So let's move on to the tasks that I completed in December. I started off by creating the first five lessons for my course. To record my course, I use a Google slideshow, Google Slides, which is free and I record my screen by using Screencast-O-Matic to record my screen and this is a very uh, reasonably priced software and I use it almost every single day, it's amazing. I also wrote a sign off for my videos so that is it for December because we were in manic phase preparing to move house and it was pretty crazy so that is why there is a big long break and I literally didn't work my business at all for January, February and March, April and May. Basically the next five months I did not work on my business at all and thankfully I feel like at this stage I was really in between businesses. I had got my previous businesses to the point where they were completely passive and still generating a lot of income which was really nice and I feel like I was still pretty much in the setup and planning phase with the Kath Kyle brand. So I don't feel like I had really started my business properly at this stage so I did feel like this was such a good time to move house because it really did enable me to focus just solely on the process of moving house which did demand my constant attention. So after that um, there was a couple of tasks that I snuck in there and I didn't really work a working day but I did, it was almost like a bit of a hobby, a little bit of me time um, and I got up um, early every morning once we'd moved house and in April I worked for, or I spent one hour a day between 6am and 7am just writing my book and I did that for the whole month. So I saw that as a bit of a hobby, I didn't really see it as work because I loved it, I enjoyed it so much and I did not launched that book um, until the following January so that was a um, bit of a, a hobby project at the time and then similarly in May I spent that same hour just editing my book creating some free gifts for my um, customers and created my customer community and that was pretty much it that was just my hobby project in April and May. Then I finally returned to working on my business on a regular basis, on a part-time basis in June, June 2020 and these are the tasks that I completed in June. 
I created my very first product. And although I, I had written my book, this was the first product that I intended to sell. It was a mini course called Millionaire Mindset Takeover. And I then created a launch plan to launch my first two new products the next, the very next month. I then created a new product autoresponder for customers to deliver my product to them. Then I wrote my launch emails to my list. I created a sales page and I used Thrive Architecture for that. And that's part of the Thrive Themes package. I'm not sure if you can buy them separately. Some of the plugins for WordPress, you can buy them separately. And some of them are part of the membership. And I am a member of the Thrive Themes company. So I get the Thrive Architecture and all of the Thrive plugins as part of that membership and they are fantastic. So that's what I use to create all of my sales pages and my opt-in pages and basically all my kind of fancy type pages. And then I worked on all of my marketing material, created all my marketing material, all of my social media posts and all that kind of stuff. I created graphics for the product and also the promotion, like for the front cover to put things in, um, in iPads and monitors and make everything look really fancy. For all my graphics, I get stock images from Envato Elements and I absolutely love that place to get stock images because I pay a small monthly fee and then I can download unlimited images, unlimited stock videos, un unlimited fonts, unlimited graphics. There is so much stuff that you can download, oh, unlim unlimited music and there's so much stuff that you can download from Invato Elements and I've been a customer for years and I absolutely love them. It's fantastic. It has, I've just got so much value from that company. And then once I've got my stock images, I use an app called Stencil App, which is quite similar to Canva. Um, but for some reason, I just never could get on board with Canva. I don't know what it is. I have used it loads of times. I even paid to upgrade it. And I don't know what it is, but I just really struggle using Canva. Um, it just doesn't seem to come very easily or intuitively to me. It just, oh, everything seemed to be very difficult. Like I would make mistakes and I couldn't figure out how to move things or grab them in the right place, even though I'd been through tutorials. So I don't know, me and Canva just never really got on, but I use Stencil app to create all of my marketing material and it is so quick and easy to use, especially when you don't have a good eye for design and you don't have a designer and they've got templates on there and you literally just click on the template. You can, at the drop of a button, it changes it to like whether you want a Pinterest pin or a Facebook or a square image or a Instagram story image and it, you just click on the button and it just um, moves it to the right size. So it adjusts the size. So it's really fast and easy and you can save like templates on there. It's so good and it's all online. And after that, I edited all of my branding and, um, because I changed my branding for the third time. So I, a lot of these tasks were repeated again because I'd had so much time off and this is when I decided to change my branding again. I created a new opt-in, well, quite a few new opt-in freebies for subscribers of my email list. And I use Thrive Leads to create my opt-in pages. I then created another training, another product to sell called Time Expander, which helps people to get more time in their day and have time for everything that they want to do. And then I set up Facebook ads to promote my product because I didn't really have an audience. I set up a live screening page for an event to promote my products. I created daily Instagram posts and scheduled those using later.com. And then I actually went on to create a third product called Brilliant Business Brain Stamps. So I managed to squeeze in three products into the one month, which was crazy. After that, I did some planning of blog posts. So I got loads done in June. I was on fire. I was so eager to get back to my business after having so much time off. It was so exciting to get back to it. I just love working on my business. 
And then in July, here are the tasks that I completed in July. I started my YouTube channel and I started publishing regular videos on there. I completed all of my marketing tasks for my third product, which was the Brilliant Business Brain Stamp. So everything that I've previously described for my marketing, I did that again for the third one. I created yet another product called my Money Time Bundle, which was a bundle of the first two products and then created all of the marketing, the sales pages, the graphics, everything for that product. I then started a TikTok account. I went through some courses, I learned how to do TikTok and I started my account and started creating TikTok videos, which was really exciting for me. And then I launched my first and second products this month. So I actually offered them for sale. So this was the month that I actually launched. So this now takes us up to the point where I launched my first product. But I am going to carry on and give you a very quick recap for the next couple of months because I am going to do a, an individual content piece focusing on each month in turn from starting from October 2020 onwards to report on my income and the goals that I achieved in a bit more detail. So the tasks that I completed in August I created, I focused a lot on creating content. I created videos, blog posts, and TikTok videos. I moved all of my products to the Thinkific platform from ClickFunnels and Shopify because I had, um, this was work that I was doing for a previous business, but I decided that I was going to put all of the products for my previous business from Green Thickies onto Thinkific, as well as my new Kath Kyle products. So all my products were on the same platform because it's just easier to manage. I then created new sales pages for all my products. And then I took one and a half weeks off on vacation. We had a staycation. We, um, we moved right by the beach and we just spent every day on the beach or going for local day trips in beautiful, stunning areas on the coast, um, really exploring the new country that we'd moved to, which was fantastic. It was such a great time. I really enjoyed that. Then in September, I got back to work again and here are the tasks that I completed in September. I carried on creating my content as before. I also focused on finishing my signature course, which is called Dream Business Blueprint. And I created 25 new lessons for Dream Business Blueprint course and finished the course, thankfully, because that was the course I started ages ago. So I was so glad that I'd done this and I was so happy with the way it turned out. After that, I created a hashtag bank for both Instagram and TikTok to speed up the process of publishing to those two platforms. I created course learning material, including workbook, checklist and bonuses for Dream Business Blueprint course. I created graphics for the new course. I set up a beta tester system and then I searched for beta testers and this was quite an in-depth process actually. It took quite a lot of my time to find testers because I didn't have an audience. So when you have nobody to even market your product to, you also have nobody who wants to test your, your product either. So I actually found that quite a challenge. Um, so that was a new thing that I've never had to do before because I in my previous business, I, I didn't do it this way around. So it's quite an interesting learning experience for me. Um, then I created some new infographics templates. I created a new content slide deck template for when I'm creating um, videos which are based on slide decks. I moved my project management system from Trello to Asana and this was a massive job as well because I have been with Trello for years and I'd heard people raving about Asana and I um, just thought it's just too big of a project but I thought no the time has come now I'm going to give it a try and I was so glad that I did because Asana is absolutely amazing. I'm just every day. I'm just thrilled with the functionality that you get for free. It's amazing. If you're not on Asana, go and get on Asana because it will be so good for your organization, especially if you're working with a team. 
After that, I created a new content piece template using Google Docs. I then created a new blog post template. I created a new email template and I found music for my new podcast that I was planning called Inveto Elements. I set up a new web website called manifestbusinesssuccess.com for my podcast and I signed up for a new domain name and I also set up hosting with SiteGround. SiteGround is a company I've been with for years and I absolutely love them. Their support is fantastic and they are just really, really helpful. After that, I planned my content for the next three months because I wanted to get really organized. And then I learned how to use some new social media sharing apps and decided whether I wanted to move to those new social media scheduling apps. So as you can see, there are so many steps involved in setting up a new online business. And I hope that this has given you some pointers in terms of the kind of tasks that you need to be doing when you set up a new business. Obviously, it depends what your focus is. Some of these tasks will be relevant and some will not be relevant. But if you've got an online business and you're selling your own products, you probably will have to do most of these tasks. So next week, I'm going to be starting my new series, which is my monthly manifestation report, where I'm going to be going into detail about how much this new business earned, what goals I achieved, how I did with my 3G stamp goals, what went well, what didn't go well, and what my thoughts were, what my mindset was at the time. And my very next content piece is showing you exactly what 3G goals are, and I'm really excited about that. So if this kind of content interests you, make sure you subscribe to my podcast and my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram so you don't miss that. So now that you have learned the exact steps I did to launch my very first product, you might be wondering what the 30 planning tasks were that I did back in October that set my business up for success. I want to encourage you to go and watch my free workshop and get my free workbook where I walk you through my complete process of planning the business of your dreams in just 30 days. My whole business is based on this planning system. So that's why I share this with you as it's so important when it comes to the success of your business. This is part of my premium course dream business blueprint and I'm only making this workshop free for a limited time. So grab that while it's still available and you can go to kathkyle.com forward slash blueprint to get that workshop or you can click the link around this content piece and see it there as well. You're going to be so glad that you did. And now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.